how much of that is like, like really kind of just understanding the kids actually doesn't happen in the paperwork. Cause I think sometimes we do all of this stuff, write all of this stuff, but sometimes it's just a conversation that it's really hard to, it's really hard to document, but tells us a lot about the kids. Like, how do you kind of balance that out? Because there is a frustration that a lot of teachers didn't get into the role to do tons of documentation, right? They, they, and so how do you kind of, how do you kind of dig into that? Cause I, I know that's a frustration. A lot of people have. Sure. So I, I can kind of answer from two ways. I know as a, um, as a teacher, uh, looking over my IEPs every year and understanding the modifications and the goal could be goals could be overwhelming. Yeah. Um, so just in terms of, in terms of students being successful, like I, I had so many kids in class that their, their IEP wasn't obviously wasn't reflective of who they are as a person. And we, we talked before about a teacher that influenced me. And, and one of the things that I would try to do is really develop that connection, understand that school may not be for, for this kid long-term. So what is right. Um, big part of what we do with secondary students, I was a secondary teacher is develop transition plans to talk about how we get a student from point A to point B, um, after high school. And that's really where I would focus my, you know, uh, focus my attention is how, how are we going to move this child towards their goals? Now you have to, you have to, um, focus on the goals that are laid out in the IEP that are curricular. I mean, you can get into, I don't, Dis, I don't disparage parents for uh, for exercising their due process rights in very many ways. It's it's why we have the special education programs we do now. But if you don't follow the IEP, you, you get into that situation. As an administrator, though, when you talk about data informed, a lot of times for us, it's 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 leverage. Like we have um, we have a disproportionality um, issue in Edison, and I don't want to get too into the weeds, but it has a lot to do with how the number is calculated. But one thing that you can't argue with is that our students are not, our, our classified students don't demonstrate the same level of pr proficiency in reading. Okay, that's clear. Right. So what, what can we do about that? And when I start to advocate for programs or certifications or, or moving our staff towards, in this case, like kind of the gold standard being like Orton certification for our, all our special ed staff, well, that's costly. Um, but it, it's really clear in what's coming out of, of these assessments. So there's there's kind of two ways to look at it, right? As a teacher, yeah, there's stuff you have to get through, but at the center of that is a human being. For me, it is a secondary teacher, right. the focus what's this child's long-term goal? And then as an administrator, it's it's really more about, okay, what can we do from a more global programmatic perspective to actually use those data and and do something positive for the overall student body of kids? Yeah, and there's something, there's something you said there that kind of sparked a thought that I've been having lately. And I, this is going to maybe, you know, get me in trouble saying this. I really struggle. I, I it, there, it just irks me. I shouldn't say I hate it, but sometimes I would say that uh, is when I hear uh, teachers referring to kids as scholars, right? Okay. And the yeah. reason I struggle with that is because scholars is a very academic term. It's about academics. It's about going to college. Like it just feels that way. Mm -hmm. And it kind of, there's a little bit of a, a context that basically if, if school is not for you, somehow you're a failure. That's what yes. I struggle with. Right. In the sense that, do we are we trying to get every kid to be the same kid by the time they leave school? Or are we trying to ensure that every kid knows what their strengths are, what their gifts are, what they're really good at, and that it leads to different things? And I think that to me, like it kind of that was something that kind of stuck out to me. What you said about that is that you know maybe school is not for some for some kids. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking specifically in the inclusion area or the special education area. I'm talking about any kid in any program, but it's like somehow if you don't, if you're not a school kid, if you're not a scholar, somehow mm -hmm. you're a failure. And that mm -hmm. I really struggle with is that it's, it's like, you're, you're saying like, Hey, our kids have different gifts, but you all got to kind of be academic and everything's about academics. And I, I, I make a distinction between, I say sometimes there's a, there's a huge difference between the idea of our smartest kids and our top academic students, so, because some of our, smartest kids are terrible academically and but they have gifts that we're not appreciating because they don't fit into the the little bubbles that we have in school that we say are important so